Hi folks, and welcome to the Ace Tanker for the AMX Foch B, the tier 10 French tank destroyer, at least one of them, because this is a recent addition to the game, at least it's a recent addition to my garage. It was introduced in patch 920 as a replacement for the Foch 155, which is now moved to reward tank status. So um, last month, well, a couple of months ago or a few months ago during patch 919, I found myself grinding the AMX Foch at uh, tier 9 in order to unlock this tank or unlock the Fosh 155 before this tank was introduced and the 155 moved to reward tank status. Um, and I hated, hated the tier 9, absolutely hated the tier 9, but um, I did it, I ground through it, I managed to unlock the 155 and I ended up with this in my garage. Now, I didn't ace the tier 9 um, during its grind and I popped into it uh, a few weeks ago in, you know, uh, for a rare game because I absolutely hated the tank and I stopped playing it after that grind. The grind killed me. But, um, I managed to ace it and I, I discovered that the Fosh uh, 50 or the AMX 50 Fosh was a, a much, much, much better tank at tier 9 with the autoloader. The gun completely changed the tank. Um, it made it viable. It could be played aggressively, whereas previously you couldn't play it aggressively. So um, I really, really enjoyed the tank and I ended up keeping it. And that's what led to this game because this game is an accidental ace. <laughs> this is my first game in the AMX Fosh B and it was completely accidental. Um, you see, I had planned to sell the AMX 50 Fosh at tier 9 uh, because I hated the tank, but because of the addition of the autoloader, um, I found myself enjoying the tank. I popped into it, I aced it, and I was really, really enjoying the tank. So, um, whereas the original plan was to sell it and move the crew into this tank, I am... Um, ended up keeping it. So I kept the AMX 50 Fosh and I ended up keeping the crew in the tank and that means meant that I had a tier 10 and no crew to put into it. But thankfully there was a 100% crew sitting in my barracks from a Wargaming minigame event. So I had a 100% Fosh uh, 50B crew sitting in my barracks, but no skills, no nothing, just just simply just 100%. Um, so not a very good crew, and not a very good crew for especially for a tier 10. But um, in war, you know, in the garage, what what you've got to do is in order to lock a crew into the tank. My crew, my plan was then to um, take that crew and uh, basically train them up in French premium tanks, and uh, then when they were decent enough, I'd put them in the Fosh 50B and start playing it. You know, at least with six cents and maybe a skill or two um but you know as i say in the garage what you've got to do is you've got to basically put a crew into the tank and you've got to play one game in that tank with that crew in order to lock the crew into the tank so that when you go back to the tank in future you can just click a button and say return crew to the tank so um i ended up taking a completely brand new 100 percent crew into the Fosh B, and uh, after acing the uh, Fosh, the AMX 50 Fosh in tier 9, I uh, put a new crew into this tank, camoed it up, and um, click play just just to uh, lock the crew in place to the, with, with this tank. Uh, my plan was basically just to play one game, be it good, be it bad, and then train the crew up in French premium TDs until they were good enough to be considered a tier 10 crew, at least in my opinion. Um, so yeah, this is my very first game in the Fosh 50, or the Fosh B at tier 10 with a terrible crew, and I was simply playing this game just to lock the crew in place. But um, anyway, uh, historically... Um, um, well, in-game, this is pretty much the same tank as it is at Tier 9, with a couple of minor differences, but they are minor. Um, but it is technically the same tank, and in real life, this tank never existed. It only existed on plans, because as I covered in the video earlier, where I was waffling, and I'm probably still waffling in this video, um, but basically the AMX Fosh, or 50 Fosh, was a tank destroyer built because the French wanted to mount a 120 millimeter gun on a tank, but um, there were no tanks that could mount that particular gun at the time it was designed. So um, as a result, they ended up putting it into a tank destroyer that was based on the AMX M4, and uh, they used basically German TDs from World War II as you know their, their inspiration, and basically came up with the Fosh or the AMX 50 Fosh. Uh, so it was a TD with a 120 millimeter gun designed to support AMX 5100s from longer range. Now, when the AMX 5100 managed to get a 120mm gun, then basically the tank became obsolete because the heavy tanks could pretty much do anything that the TD could do. So the project was cancelled. But um, with regards to this tank, um, this is basically the Tier 9 tank. Um, 
in plans, but the only difference in uh, the plans from the Tier 9 to the Tier 10 is that uh, this was a plan to mount the 120mm on the tank, but have an autoloader. So the original Tier 9 wasn't an autoloader. Um, this was a version of the tank that did have an autoloader, just like the AMX 5120. Um, and, but as I say, it only existed in plan. So this is a little bit of a fantasy tank, and that's pretty much it for the history. So uh, it is actually pretty much the same tank as the Tier 9. So comparing the Tier 10 against the Tier 9, you're pretty much going to see it's the same tank. In real life, even though it only existed in plans, it was basically the same tank with an autoloader. So it's exactly the same in game. You get a DPM increase, but it's the same gun, just happens to be a autoloader. So you've got 257 millimeters of penetration and 400 damage. Now 257 millimeters on a Tier 10 TD is not good. It really isn't good. Um, so that's probably amongst the worst penetration of any of the Tier 10 TDs but you can make it work. Um, you can see that the rate of fire has been improved from it being a tier 9 to a tier 10, so you get a better rate of fire. The reload time has increased slightly, but not by much, just by about 4 seconds. But the clip size has also increased from 4 shots to 6 shots. So instead of being able to do 1600 damage as you could at tier 9, now all of a sudden you can do 2400 damage with uh, the clip in a Fosh B. So 2400 damage wait for a reload for 36 seconds and then do another 2400 damage huge huge increase in the damage output but not only that but the rate of fire between shots has been reduced from 2.4 seconds to just two seconds so you can basically offload all six shells in about 10 seconds so you can do 2400 damage in 10 seconds with the tier 10. other than that the stats of the gun are pretty much the same with a slight increase in the ammo capacity and potential damage when it comes to gun handling again because it's a tier 10 compared to a tier 9 um, even though it's the same gun basically the aim time has been improved the accuracy is slightly better and the soft stats for the gun shooting on the move and shooting while turning your tank have been improved as well so the gun handling better on the tier 10 than it is on the tier 9 the uh, the dpm is better the uh, burst damage is better um so yeah it's looking a lot better uh, but it's pretty much the same tank you can see as mobility same top speed of 50 kilometers an hour same reverse speed of 30 which is not amazing. Uh, the autoloader is much, much heavier than the Fosh is at tier 9, however, and that means that the power to weight ratio isn't as good. Also, the terrain resistance is a little bit worse on the Fosh B at tier 10. So, um, essentially, you've got worse terrain resistance, although you do have slightly better tank traverse so maneuverability maybe doesn't accelerate quite as well it doesn't turn well it turns okay but the terrain resistance means it's maybe a little bit worse on soft and uh, medium ground but um, other than that it's still a pretty good tank you can't complain at about 18 power to weight ratio um, when it comes down to armor and health you can see that it's got a slight buff on its side armor otherwise it's the same tank from the front um, it's got 80 millimeters of side armor compared to 70 as it is at tier 9 it got a health buff because it goes from tier 9 to tier 10. Uh, the engine and the tracks got a little bit more health um, and that's pretty much it. It's the same tank. So um, essentially it just got a slight armor increase on the side it got a uh, major major gun improvements and it got a little you know a few more hit points and that's pretty much the only major differences between the Fosh B and the Fosh as it is at tier 9. So having put a brand new crew in here and wanting to lock them into place I clicked battle for my first ever game in the Fosh B we ended up here in steps uh, on steps in an all tier 10 game so all tier 10s just like the tier 9 ace was an all tier 9 game, um, this is an all tier 10 game. You can see the acceleration, not amazing. It is definitely a little bit more sluggish than the tier 9 is, but um, it is so much more dangerous. It may lack a little bit in uh, its uh, penetration with the standard ammunition, but it is the same gun as the tier 9 gets. It just gets two extra rounds in the clip. Um, but uh, premium ammunition takes you up to 325 so um, we're going to move up to the uh, flank here on steps on the zero line and we're just going to advance now we've got a lot of tanks once again camping the middle of the map that's not good including we've got a medium tank platoon who are camping the middle of the map taking their time getting over here but um, I'm just I don't want to get too aggressive I really don't want to get too aggressive I don't want to be the first one shot or first one spotted there um, is a, a lot of dangerous, there are a lot of dangerous tanks on the enemy team. But um, just looking, maybe my gun depression is not the best, but just looking for opportunity here. This 907 completely oblivious to the fact I'm here. Now the gun depression, not good. 
and I put one shot in and I missed my shot on his lower glacis. Aim more carefully, bounce on his lower glacis and put one more shot in and you look how many rounds I've got. I bounce, put a shot into his lower glacis and fall back down. Now that was disappointing because I can do 2400 damage with my clip. He managed to put two shots into me, or maybe it was three shots into me. Um, I emptied all six shots at him, and I only managed to do 1100 damage, and that's probably why the Object 907 is considered the best medium tank in the game at the moment. Um, it just, I don't know, too many shots bounced, too many shots missed, but I've learned my lesson. As I say, it's my first game of the tank, I'm just feeling it out. I actually didn't know what the differences other than clip size between this and the tier 10 were, but I've reloaded. And now I'm just looking for targets of opportunity, tracking the Leopard. One shot in, switch to the IS-7, get one shot in. Okay, TVP is moving, or that's another object, 907. Two shots left, and I would be empty on the Tier 9 right now. But, um, oh, that was disappointing. So, um, managed to bounce a couple of shots there that I wasn't expecting to bounce, but we're being pushed back. I'm on a one-hit kill. I'm down to 300 hit points. Managed to bounce the uh, up IS-7. So, uh, my commander is dead, and as I say, this is... I wasn't taking this game too seriously. I'm falling back now because I've got to. Um, our medium tanks are all sitting at the back sniping, and this is, you know, our, our platoon in G9, G0. They should have actually been far more aggressive, but they all chose to sit at the back and snipe, and that's caused us huge, huge problems here. The enemy team sent a lot of tanks down the correct flank, and I'm trying, trying to help the 140 because uh, I just can't get shots on this. Ah, oh, there we go. Finally take out the IS-7 when he presents his lower glacis, but um, once again our tier 10 mediums all camping at the back, all sniping, and we're just trying to hold the line here while I'm on a one hit, ki or one hit kill, but three shots in, and there we go, that's much a much much better clip, so we've got, still got two shots left, and okay, their object 140 goes down, so... Um, Alright, we managed somehow through a miracle to survive this. There's just two tanks left or maybe three tanks left down here on this flank. And now, now our full health tier 10 mediums decide to rush in when there's only three tanks left and they're all badly hurt. Um, they guys, th These guys could have had a much, much bigger impact. But um, anyway, uh, I'm going to advance with them because again, I like playing my TDs aggressively even though it almost cost me my life. And uh, as I say, this is a complete accidental ace, you know, because I didn't think I was playing well, um, made a huge mistake, lost all my health, failed to do very much damage with my first clip, and um, we're just going to advance. So still some very dangerous TDs on the enemy team, but uh, we're winning comfortably, the score is 10-5, and uh, we're just going to keep going, wondering what TDs are camping spawn. Now most of the enemy team have been spotted on the 1-2 line, so I figure, you know what, it's maybe safer to cross the line, cross the middle of the map. Maybe I can take a shortcut across the middle. But, um, okay, it looks like a 183 is still over there. Okay, 183 in spawn to my right. I don't think I've noticed on the mini-map just yet. Yeah, there we go. Finally noticed. And, um, all right, so now we've got targets up here. So I was going to try and flank, and maybe I should have kept going to try and flank the tanks down on the one line, but I decided to turn around deal with this 183 using the bushes for cover and um, oh and now I've spotted a gorilla all right so the 183 isn't going to get shots on me two shots into the gorilla he's taken another hit three shots into the gorilla still got three shots left in the clip and this is the major difference between the tier 9 and the tier 10 so we can take out the FV 183 with uh, still two shots left and uh, just the E100 and a 183 left on the enemy team, but I don't think they're surrounded. They're not going to survive very long. So we're up to four kills. We've done 5k damage again. None of that, or very little of that, was assistance damage. It was basically me shooting from the front, um, shoot, spotting my own targets. All the enemy tanks go down, and um, yeah, I thought, okay, 5k damage, four kills. First game in the tank, almost got killed. Almost made a huge mistake, but um, yeah, all right, crew are locked in, so I'm happy. And then this popped up. Now, I've been seeing seeing a lot of people talking about how O-Power overpowered this tank is, how crazy it is with regards to its damage potential. So I thought 5k in this tank was pretty, pretty average. I didn't, wasn't expecting very much. But as I say, very, very surprised to see the ace pop up, especially with a very poor crew, especially as it was my first game in the tank. I didn't know what to expect. But um, yeah, we, we, we managed to ace a, a tier 10 on our first game. Um, I don't know 
how I did it. Maybe I got pretty lucky. Maybe you know, a lot of other people weren't playing the tank that particular week, but um, didn't take a lot to ace. I was very, very surprised. Maybe on the other hand, a lot of people are driving it. I don't know, but 1187, almost 1200 XP was enough to pick up an ace in a tier 10. That kind of surprised me. 5k damage and 4 kills. So a very, very average game, but yet um, it's another one off the list. So we fired 20, we hit 19, and very disappointed with only 15 pens. And I think, I think this is this is the one and only problem with the uh, Fosh P at tier 10 is the penetration is probably the worst penetration of any of the tier 10 TDs and um, yeah tend to bounce or we tended to uh, bounce a lot more uh, than I would have expected in other TDs but then again it's got a very dangerous auto loader so um, received six hits and pretty much all of those went through my viewport they penned and did damage but um, did manage to sneak in two bounces there somewhere um, so we only spotted one even though I was trying to play on the front line Damage 7, destroyed 4, only did 376 assistance damage. So, in essence, on the tier 9, I did more damage and more assistance damage than I did in the tier 10. But um, they were both aces, and they were back-to-back -back aces as well, which was unexpected. But um, being a tier 10, the ammo was quite expensive, and we only made a profit of about 10,000 credits. Uh, it was my very, very first game of the day. Um, in fact, I'd probably, if you were to check the server game time, you'd see that this game was played immediately after the AMX. 50 Fosh at tier 9 that game um, the only thing I did was hang around in the garage for a while and switch out crew members and things like that but um, anyway first ever game in the AMX Fosh B and it was an ace tanker so um, it's, it's, I don't have to worry about it anymore uh, but I'm probably probably still going to play this I'm going to stick the crew into the premium tanks and I'm basically going to uh, build them up so that when I do decide to hop into the AMX 50 Fosh B again I'll be able to um, have a decent crew put a decent crew in it. Um, but um, in the meantime, uh, this crew have been moved into the AMX um, Fosh 155 and um, hopefully, hopefully I'll get around to playing that tank and, and maybe acing it as soon. I just certainly, certainly hope it's as easy to ace as the 50 Fosh B was. But uh, anyhow, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you next time.